Gainesville's Salvation Army Food Pantry is one of our first lines of defense against food insecurity. This food pantry alone has served more than 400 food orders in the last month. Salvation Army Commanding Officer Ernest Hull says people are relying on food pantries increasingly in recent weeks. Like everywhere else, we've seen a, a huge increase in the number of folks needing food assistance, many first-time folks who've never had to seek this assistance before. Salvation Army officials have told me that now more than ever, they are struggling to receive donations. As commodity prices rise, more and more people need to use the food pantries. It also means that it's harder for people to donate. Salvation Army social worker Ida Mosley says pantries are struggling to remain full with increased demand. We've seen a large influx of people in the last several weeks. And so we, you know, we're a nonprofit, so we are struggling to keep up, you know, with the demand. So if, if that were possible that people, you know, could reach out with food donations, that would be really awesome. Their food pantry has freezers available, so both perishable and non-perishable donations are accepted. Mosley explained there are multiple reasons for rising food insecurity. There was already a, a, an issue with COVID and then the inflation and then the hurricane. And so people have just had one situation after situation after situation. Despite the hardships that citizens face, food pantries like Gainesville Salvation Army are here to fight food insecurity. As Hurricane Ian nears, price gouging laws are in effect for all of Florida. The laws were activated following the state of emergency declared by Governor Ron DeSantis on Saturday. It prevents people from renting, selling, and leasing essentials and housing for an unreasonable price. If prices are significantly higher than last month, then it is considered a price gouge. The laws cover necessary supplies for storm events like food, water, ice, gas, and lumber. Alachua County Emergency Management Assistant Director David Peaton says residents should stay informed by monitoring their website. Best thing to do is to make sure that you're signed up to get an emergency alert so that if we do uh, have new information that comes out, you can text the word Alachua to 888777 to get put on those alerts. Peaton says currently there are no reports of price gouging in Alachua County. If you see evidence of price gouging, report any information to the Attorney General's office. A North Central Florida church is organizing a donation drive to help affected families. The Deeper Purpose Community Church is accepting donations to help hard-hit areas in Charlotte and Lee counties. Monetary donations and items like bottled water, non-perishable food, and clothes are being collected. They are accepting donations from 1 to 3 p.m. tomorrow and Wednesday. Pastor Adam Joy says the drive has united unaffected communities in helping their South Florida neighbors. The entire state, the entire nation is praying for them. and. Uh, the entire area here, just all over the state of Florida, we're coming together to, you know, bring them some relief and just get them as much help as we can. He says they've received about 100 donations so far, but he hopes to fill three utility trailers. Staff and volunteers will drive the donations down early Thursday morning. Applications for Biden's student loan forgiveness plan are now available. Francis Copper is here with the full story. Americans can now start applying for student loan debt relief online. The beta website for the Biden-Harris administration's student loan forgiveness opened over the weekend. Eligibility is determined based on your income from 2020 to 2021. Individuals making less than $125,000 or families making less than $250,000 are eligible. The loan forgiveness offers up to $20,000 for people with Pell Grants. However, only $10,000 are available for non-Pell Grant recipients. Pell Grant recipient Theodore Stronkowski said he was enthusiastic about this opportunity. I feel like, um, like a free man, you know, for lack of better words. Like it's kind of nice, you know, I get, I get to remove 20 grand off of, my, off of my debt, which is nice, you know. Dollar saved, dollar earned. Applications are open until December 30th, 2023. That's all from me, now back to the desk. Welcome to WUFT News First at 5. I'm Amy Gallo. And I'm Emily Palazzato. Thanks for joining us. Election season arrives in Florida. From the U.S. Senate race, the governor's race, on down to the race for Gainesville mayor, the midterm brings a long ballot with high stakes. Those ballots reached hands today with the start of early voting. WUFT's Camilla Pereira reports. It's the first day of early voting in Alachua County, and polling locations are open for people to cast in their ballots. Seven early voting locations opened across the county, 
in Gainesville, Hawthorne, Alachua, and Newberry. Early voters have until November 5th to cast their ballots before Election Day. Early voters can cast their ballots up until November 6th at the County Supervisor of Elections Office. The office's communications director, Aaron Klein, says registered voters can vote at any of the polling places. The voters don't have to fear about not really finding a location that suits them because, again, it's not like on Election Day you can choose any of those locations to vote. Klein urges people to vote early to avoid the stress of voting on Election Day. Early voting polls run from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. each day. And Klein tells me the voting locations have everything ready for people to come in and vote. In Alachua County, Camila Pereira, WUFT News. This event is more cute than scary, as you can see from this adorable army that I have formed. The event started forming these decorations at 8 a.m. this morning. As you can see, the line to donate canned goods has already started forming behind me. This is the 26th annual Boo at the Zoo Festival that has been held at Santa Fe Teaching College. This festival was originally envisioned by students more than 25 years ago. The event started at 3 p.m. and goes until 7.30 tonight. Participants need to donate one canned food or non-perishable food item per person for admission. Teaching Zoo Director Jonathan Mio says the event helps unite the community in more ways than one. One way to give back is not only provide free trick-or-treating opportunities for the kids, but to collect canned good, uh, canned good items. And so we are expecting about 5,000 canned goods. Games, animal encounters for everybody who attends. Director Mio says that all canned goods who, that are distributed here will be returned back to the UF community. My name is Francis Kaffer, WFT News.